So I would really like to understand the geometric nature of fermions, uh, much as Tevye and Wood. And uh, our approaches are very compatible um, in many ways. But I'm going to try to figure out what fermions are based on their interactions. So whereas he's looking at this algebraic structure and putting fields together, I want to look at the interactions. And by seeing how fermions interact with things that we know are geometric fields and we understand geometrically, we can get an understanding for what fermions are geometrically and also get an insight, a, a new insight into what those other fields are. So I'm going to start by looking at the action for Dirac fermions in a curve of space time and see what interaction it has. Um, this is the covariant derivative of a fermion field. I've also included a Higgs multiplet interacting with the field. So these are all the interactions. Um, can you guys hear me in the back? I'd rather not use a microphone if I'm talking loudly. Maybe use a recent microphone. All right. Turn it on. Uh, uh, you're burning minutes here. All right. All right. Are you sure this isn't too loud? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Um, no. No. But really, you, when you focus. All right. I'll, I'll speak. I'll just speak more loudly. All right. So, I, fortunately, I'm doing a unified model, so I only have one slide. So that's going to save me some trouble. <laughs> Now, when we look at the interactions, we immediately see something suggested here. And that is the spin connection of gravity, which is a spin 1, 3 field, is being added to all the gauge fields, which are in the Lie algebras of the various Lie groups of the standard model. So the fact that they're being added really tells us that we're, suggests that we're working with just one algebra for the extra, in this covariant derivative as the connection. Now, it's not a simple algebra, obviously, because you have the spin 1, 3 part, and it's independent of the Lie algebra, but it suggests they're the up, same please. thing. What's that? Speak up. Speak up. All right. But it suggests they're the same kind of thing. So we can recast the Lie algebra of the standard model in terms of spin algebras. And in fact, there exist two grand unified theories that allow us to do that. The most famous one is the spin 10 grand unified theory in which the standard model can be set. It also has a smaller subalgebra, spin 4 plus spin 6, which is called the petit Salam grand unified theory. Um, there's this other grand unified theory uh, called SU5, but that has been ruled out by proton decay. And also, it's not suggested because we'd like to be able to represent these things using spin generators. Okay, these are Clifford bivector generators of a spin algebra. All right, so that's suggested. But now there's something that's really fascinating we can do if we really consider these things to be bivectors. Okay? And that is we can pull this Higgs part inside our covariant derivative by multiplying it times the inverse of what's out here in front of the parentheses, okay? which is the gravitational frame. Okay? It's the orthonormal tetrad of gravity that is necessary in the Dirac action in curved space time. When we do that, we get this unified bosonic connection that includes not only the spin connection and the gauge fields, but a hybrid frame Higgs part that now is sort of a glue that glues together the spin connection with the gauge fields. It's really, I know, you might think that this wouldn't work, because the only thing you have to do to be able to do this, to make a bivector, is take the frame, which is a vector with respect to the spin 1, 3, and a vector with respect to whatever spin algebra we're using for the gauge groups, and make a bivector out of that. But it turns out that the vector of spin 4 in this petit Salam model gives exactly the algebraic structure of the standard model Higgs when we combine it with the frame as the frame Higgs. So that makes this 4x4 four four part the sort of off-diagonal part that glues together the spin 1, 3 and the spin 4 in a spin 1, 7 Lie algebra. So you basically you get a unification of gravity and gauge fields, and that's all just suggested by the standard model in curved space-time action for the Dirac field. It's really a remarkable, almost, uh, I think, very compelling unification of gravity with the gauge fields. All right, so we have this connection suggestion. It's, it's suggesting something very unusual, which is that really we can start out with a naked four-dimensional space-time manifold and consider gravity and the gauge fields to be part of this very large bosonic, bosonic connection as a principal bundle over space-time. And that the metric really comes about from a symmetry breaking in this connection, whereby the Higgs field and the frame uh, acquires a vacuum expectation value. And that results in a metric over space-time, as well as the VEV for the Higgs. So 
I'm telling a story, but it actually all fits together very well. It's a very nice puzzle because you can take the curvature of this connection, and when you take the curvature of this unified bosonic connection, you get very nice pieces. Um, I put uh, lines or anything so you can remember the grade of this form. So this is a bivector value two form, and that's the Riemann curvature two form, plus an area term multiplied times the Higgs squared. That's going to end up giving us a cosmological constant. We get the, the torsion and the exterior derivative of the Higgs in the frame Higgs part of the algebra and the four by four part of the algebra. And of course, we get the curvature of the gauge fields. So that's a nice thing because you can immediately use that to build an action that will give an action for the standard model and gravity interacting with the Higgs field. And when you, basically this comes out of an FF. When you do an FF with that, with a couple of duality terms, this being the Hodge dual, uh, which you need the E4 out of that, which is a little awkward, and this being the dual of spin 1, 3, you basically can re recover the actions for gravity <coughs> and the gauge fields and the Higgs. So that's a very nice way of understanding things, all suggested by having started with the draft action. But there's something else that gets suggested here. And that is, you can consider what happens when you want to include the fermions, which exist in a spinner multiplet of this grand unified theory in gravity, as part of one big algebra. So you can construct what's called a super connection that's valued in this fermionic and gate and harmonic <coughs> algebra, but is not related by supersymmetry. There's no symmetry now that mixes H and Psi. And consider this thing and take its, its curvature by this formula here. And as pieces, you get the bosonic curvature, which we already know is nice. And we also get the covariant derivative of the fermions. But that's an unusual covariant derivative because we have the Lie bracket in this large algebra. But it turns out there are these exceptional Lie groups with exceptional Lie algebras that have exactly this structure of spin groups acting on um, a fermionic representation space. It's really an amazing thing. It's great to discover that. It makes lots of nice pictures that now have appeared in the press everywhere, which can be fun but stressful at the same time. Anyway, um, the remarkable fact is that if you look at one generation fermions acted by spinners, exactly that algebra sits in this largest uh, non-compact split real form of this uh, E8 Lie algebra. Now, what this structure of E8 suggests also is you have these three 8 by 8 blocks related by trality, but it doesn't work in an obvious way. That's 30 seconds? 16. <laughs> 64 comes out of half of one of these and half of another one, and you have a triality symmetry relating to three, but if you look at it, obviously, it doesn't immediately give the right plumb number. So I've been playing with lots of stuff. I want to play with what Tevian's looking at. Um, there are also you can do things like combine three E8s and the leech lattice, all sorts of possibilities to explore. But this is really, really promising that the Lee model of the whole thing fits in here. All right, and uh, on to questions.